Hey folks, coming at you with a uh, solution from day two of Advent of Codes. So today we are playing rock, paper, scissors with these elves on the beach or something. Uh, so obviously rock, paper, scissors, very simple game. Every player just throws rock, paper, or scissors. And rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, scissors beats paper. Uh, and... Our input is actually very simple. We just have each each line has two characters in it. Uh, the first character is always what our opponent is going to play. And then we have different interpretations of the second column depending on the first or second part. In the first part, we're interpreting the second column as what we are going to replay, what we are going to play in reply. So A is rock, B is paper, C is scissors. And for us, we'll say y, uh, X is rock, Y is paper, Z is scissors. That is the first part of the problem. And we want to evaluate how each of these rounds will go, how many points we get. We get six points for winning the round by the rules of rock, paper, scissors, three points for a tie, and uh, zero points for losing. But we also get a certain number of points depending on which of these figures we put. So rock is always worth one point, paper is two points, scissors is three points. Uh, the only thing that's going to change in the second part of the problem is that instead of interpreting these as our moves, we're going to interpret these letters as our expected result, where X is we want to lose, uh, because winning too often would be suspicious or something. Y is a draw, Z is we expect it to win. And so in each case, we're just trying to calculate our total score. So to start off, we want to parse uh, all of this. This is pretty simple. Um, basically, we start off with just RPS is a rock, paper, scissors type, just enums, nothing complicated. Uh, and then to actually parse those, uh, we use a bunch of alternatives. So um, we parse rock either with the character A or X, uh, and just return rock, and then we just do these three different alternatives. And to parse a single line, we parse the first character, empty space, second character, and we return them. Uh, nothing complicated there. Line type is just a tuple with two of these RPS characters. We'll translate those RPS characters for the second part. We have a, this other type expected result, and we'll just do a simple translation. Um, and then to combine all of this together, uh, we use this very common pattern, sep and by parse line EOL. Anytime where you have uh, just each line is its own independent input, you can use this, uh, this very simple pattern. Uh, so what do we do once we have these inputs. Well, uh, this is actually a very straightforward folding problem. Uh, so I, in, in my solution template, I actually just sort of have this as a uh, as a pattern where it's like, okay, we decide what, like, wh what does our folding function look like? Each time we're just taking one of the lines, so one of these character pairs, this is our line type, and for our folding function we take this line type and we have some folding type. In this case our fold type is the score that we're evaluating, our total score. And so that's just an integer. And the initial value is just going to be zero. Uh, so all we really need to do is just fold, <laughs> use fold down uh, with our fold line function over this uh, you know, initial fold value. What does this fold line look like? Uh, what was the function actually doing? It's just taking our previous score and adding the new score. And so to get to calculate the new score in the first part, we have to score the actual character of the figure that we play. Uh, so for this function, just score RPS, one, two, three, very simple. And then the other case is we have to evaluate what the match is based on each of these uh, two characters. So if it's rock and rock, we have three points for a draw. If it's rock and paper, we play the paper, so we win, we get six points, etc. And so we just evaluate the match, we add that to score RPS, and we all add all that to previous score. And that's all we need for the first part. Because um, we have that fold in there, and so we just we parse our input, we process our input, we get our output value. Uh, that's done. With the hard part, there's not a whole lot that changes there. Um, <clears throat> we just have to change how we evaluate the match. Because we're, so first we have to translate. We say map translate on our inputs. So that gives us RPS and the expected result rather than just two RPS values. And so then we just look at, again, we can just enumerate each of the uh, possibilities. 
So if it's rock and we're supposed to win, well, what happens? Well, we play paper. That gives us two points, and then we win, we get six points. And if uh, our opponent plays paper, hypothetically, and we are supposed to draw, that if that's our expected uh, result of the match, what, what do we do? We play paper, we get two points, and then we get the draws three points. So this gives a total of five. And we just do this for all nine cases, and we use that eval match, where we're sort of incorporating both of the different scores in there all at once, which I could have done in the first part, I suppose. Um, but anyways, that just gives us um, our folding function, and that, that's really all we have to do for the, for the you know, hard part of the prop for part two. I always call part two hard, even when it's not necessarily uh, that much harder. Uh, but that's all we really have to do. Our, our solution's already done, uh, you know, so that, that's kind of the power of using uh, sort of solution patterns. Worked out really well for me in this uh, particular case. I'm sure at some point we will get a use for this pattern, for the state evolution pattern, um, but that'll come along uh, at some point in the future. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this quick little summary of my solution. Um, we'll be back again, uh, hopefully tomorrow with day three. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Monday Morning Haskell. Link for that is in the video description. Also just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also uh, very much appreciated.